Hey, this is lesson one on a, a series of lessons about fingerstyle guitar. I've been a teacher of this style for about 35 years uh, and I've discovered some uh, simple ways of uh, progressing fairly rapidly in this particular style. That you don't have to use a thumb pick, there are good reasons for using a thumb pick and there are some equally good reasons not to. Uh, I, I think probably to start with it, it, I would uh, I would encourage you not to use a thumb pick. Uh, you should be able to do both, so you may as well learn to use bare fingers to start off with and come back to using the thumb pick a little bit later, so I'll get rid of it for now. Now, first of all, we'll just check that we're in tune. That's my E. We've got an A. D. G, B, and the treble E. This guitar that I'm playing is an Ayers M-I-C-C-R. It's a cedar top, rosewood back and sides, absolutely beautiful guitars. They come out of Vietnam, but they're handmade, small company. Uh, making absolutely world-class instruments at a fraction of the price of a lot of other uh, instruments that use this sort of timber and this sort of quality of workmanship. So uh, do yourself a favour and have a look for Ayers guitars. Uh, basics of finger style guitar. I'm going to teach you uh, how to use a, a style that uses thumb and three fingers, index, middle and ring finger. And we're going to just play an E chord. I'm presuming everyone knows an E chord if you don't. Get a chord book and look it up. There's the simple E chord. Now, some basic rules at this stage. Now, rules meant to be broken and later on we will be breaking them, but at this stage I want you to stick to these rules. It will help you to progress more quickly. The thumb plays uh, any of the three bass strings dependent on what sort of uh, what chord we're playing. Your index finger on your right hand always plays the G string, or third string, one, two, three. Remembering strings get numbered from the bottom up, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the G string is the third string, your index finger plays that. Your middle finger plays the B string, or second string, and your ring finger plays the treble E string, or first string. Now, most often I rest my little finger just very, very lightly on the top of the guitar. It just gives me a sort of a depth gauge, and keeps me anchored. When I teach people this style, I find a lot of people come back the week after I've shown them the basics and they're pressing down for dear life on that such that the, the blood's running out of their finger. You don't need to do that. It just needs to be barely touching there. I'd, I'd suggest you try to play like this for a couple of weeks. If you can't come at it, if you find that it's, uh, it's just too awkward, I've got no problem with you lifting your little finger up. But, uh, Particularly on a steel string guitar, I find it a useful uh, technique to keep you just positioned properly. Now, if we're playing an E chord, our bass strings with our, played with our thumb are going to be the 6th string and the 4th string. E and the D. Most often, and this is another rule I suppose, is that the, the, the bass notes that you play are going to be 6 and 4 or 5 and 4. So the E and the D, or the A and the D. If I was on a C chord, for example, it would be those two, the A and the D. If I was on a G chord, it's the E and the D. An A chord would be the A and the D. And so, ultimately we're going to be getting to a pattern that goes like this. We'll take some quick steps along the way. So the first thing, is for you to just rest your index finger, middle finger and ring fingers on the strings that they're supposed to play. And with your thumb, you just play the E and the D backwards and forwards in a steady rhythm. Just like that. Now I can't stress this enough. This should be something that you practice for weeks, if not months. Uh, even though we will move on to other things very quickly, you should always come back to this because we're trying to get independence between thumb and fingers. I suggest to my students, 
that you sit in front of the TV, you watch a half hour show, a sitcom or six o'clock news or something like that, and even if, if you're going to annoy other people in the house, just mute your guitar and just play six and four like that. When you can do that for the entire half hour show, plus conduct a conversation at the same time, you'll know that you've got it. Okay? So, practice that. Now then, our next step with this sort of uh, style is to play the three fingers together after each uh, of the thumb strokes. So we're going thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers. So. Speed it up a bit. step that we're going to take leads us to our basic pattern, basic finger style pattern, kind of the fountainhead of this style if you like, at least from my perspective. Uh, and in this case you're going to play one finger after each of the thumb strokes and the fingers are going to go in order. They're going to go index, middle, ring, middle. So at the same time you're going to play thumb, index, thumb, Middle, thumb, ring, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, middle. Now you'll notice every time I play the D string or fourth string, the finger that follows it is the middle finger on the B string or second string. If you find you're playing this pattern and that isn't happening for you, then you've got out of sequence somehow. Now remember I said rules meant to be broken and we will be breaking these rules obviously down the track, but it's important that you get the basics to start off with. So thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, middle. Speed it up a bit. And you can see that you've got a rolling pattern at any one time you're only playing one note. Now, one more step in this first lesson. I've given you three phases to this picking pattern. Just the thumb on its own, the thumb with the three fingers together, and the thumb with one finger following. Right, now, the next thing to do is to mix and match those things. So swap backwards and forwards between each of those. Two. What you're really trying to do is confuse yourself. Remember, we're trying to get independence between thumb and fingers. So we want to uh, confuse the brain to a degree that, uh, uh, that you're having to initially think about it. Same as when you're learning to drive a car and having to learn about changing gears and pressing the clutch in or the brakes or the accelerator or whatever that you've got to consciously think about these things when you first start off but it doesn't take very long at all before it becomes all very automatic and you don't think about it at all. Same thing with this, this sort of basic pattern that I've taught you, it's, it, it doesn't take too long to get to the point that it's automatic if you follow the steps that I'm giving you. So we've got thumb, thumb and fingers, then thumb and one finger after each of the thumb strokes. Back to the thumb, thumb and fingers, thumb and one finger after each. Back. All right. Now, in terms of practice. I encourage people to practice no more than 30 minutes a day. Now you might be really keen to get going on this and, and think to yourself, well I want to practice a lot more than that. Uh, if you want to play more than 30 minutes a day, that's fine. There's a difference between playing and practicing. Practice is conscious effort to improve. At the end of that 30 minute practice you should be better than you were at the beginning of the 30 minutes, even if it's only slightly thumb like that. It will pay big dividends in a, a short time. So that's the first lesson.